Jakovis versus Tony Lama, the new kid on the block versus the household name, the well-funded direct-to-consumer private small business model versus the old school uh, distribution that's owned by a bigger company in Justin, which is also owned by an even bigger company with Berkshire Hathaway that's publicly traded. We got almost identical looking boots from each to really dissect these things and go through every little detail to see who really reigns supreme in the mid-tier entry-level cowboy boot market. And thanks to Tactile Knife Co. for sponsoring this video. You might recognize that name because it's the same guys that make the Tactile Turn pens that are one of our more popular and more successful sponsors on the channel. You guys will really like these pens. And just like the pens, they're made in the United States in their Dallas shop. And they also use the same really high quality materials like this knife, this really skinny, slim knife. The way they can make it so slim is because this handle is titanium. So it has that like strange lightweight feel of titanium. Plus you get a magna cut steel blade, which is really hot right now apparently. And they come with the same lifetime warranty the pens came with because this brand stands behind what they do and they back it fully, which is really cool. And the thing is, Tactile Knife Co. is a pretty young company. They've only been around for a couple years. It's a really small operation, so you're supporting a small startup with good guys in it. It's all made in the United States. And the thing is, there's tons of positive feedback out there. Nick Shabazz's Knife of the, War of the Year Award went to Tactile Knife Co. And there's a ton of other YouTube videos out there reviewing how good these knives actually are. So if you need yourself a nice little slim, high quality made in the United States knife with a titanium handle, check out Tactile Knife Co. via the link in my description. And to show you guys how sharp these knives really are we'll be cutting the Tecovas with this knife so check them out below so now let's go over the brief history of Tecovas because it is kind of an interesting story and really deviates from a lot of these brands we're gonna be cutting apart in this series because of how young this brand actually is so in 2015 the founder Paul Hedricks decided he wanted to make a cowboy boot brand after going to Harvard he couldn't find any good cowboy boots and he wanted to take the cowboy boot cliche out of just Western wear he wanted to to more modernize the cowboy boot. So starting in 2015, they started building the brand, they started doing several rounds of funding. And the benefit of that is you can just pump a lot of money into promoting a brand. And that's why with Tecovis, they're really well known because they've really hyper-focused on that direct to consumer brand model and really funneling tons of money into marketing. That's why anytime anyone says cowboy boot around you, the next time you're on social media, you're gonna get a Tecovis ad. And then in 2019, they opened their very first brick and mortar storefront shop. And in that same year, they raised 30 million in funding from a venture capital firm founded by the creator of Warby, Warby Parker. And then in 2020, they raised another 15 million, opening more stores, expanding the brand. And now in 2022, they have 19 brick and mortar shops that they sell their boots out of. They're at a huge presence online. Even more advertising goes into Tecovis. And that's how Tecovis in under 10 years became a predominant brand in the market. And that direct to consumer raising capital business model has become very successful for a lot of these brands because in 2021, they reported a hundred million dollars in revenue and to put that in comparison the Justin boot company that owns Tony Lama they total 320 million dollars in revenue Tony Lama itself which has been around since 1911 only uh, only reported 65 million in revenue so in the course of less than a decade it's already outpaced Tony Lama and it's starting to knock on the doors of the Justin con conglomerate that makes a good portion of the boots on the market and to me that's pretty impressive and it's pretty crazy to see how much faster businesses can grow now with the internet and these funding models compared to these old school brands that sometimes get a little bit stuck in their ways so let's start dissecting this thing and start analyzing all the details in this boot to really find out the truth so let's start with the leather first and foremost, like always. So the shaft of the Tecovis is a calfskin leather. It's one millimeter thick on the outside. The lining leather is one millimeter as well. So two to 2.5 total with the lining and everything on the inside as well. Compared to the shaft of the Tony Lama, it's basically the exact same thicknesses and everything, but the Tony Lamas are a cowhide instead of the, the calfskin. So you'll, you'll notice a difference in texture. The, the Tecovis is a lot more malleable. It's a lot softer. It's a little bit looser of a leather compared to the more hard and stiff Tony Lamas. And that's just the difference between calfskin and cowskin. But how would we grade these two shaft leathers? Well, for me, the Tecovis, you don't have that, we did a little burn test, you don't have that plastic coating on top that melts, it's just a heavy pigment, but it's not nearly as heavy as the, the Tony Lamas. If you look at the cross section, you can see there's a grain pattern in there, even though it's smaller because it's a calfskin and the, the grain's smaller on that, and there's no fake print embossed into it. So to me, that would be a B tier leather, which was the exact same tier that we put the Tony Lamas on in. So out of the two of them, which one's better? I would say the Tecovis is a slightly better leather. It doesn't have quite as much finish on top. I would give the edge slightly to the Tecovis, 
because I think it's just a little bit less pigment on top. It has a little bit more of its natural characteristics. So really I would say like the Tony Lamas is a B and the Tecovis is like a B plus. Still within that B range, but just slightly better. As for the Vamp leather, this is where there's a bigger difference. Because if you look at the Tecovis, this is a naturally shrunken leather texture. And what they do is when they're tanning this leather, instead of pulling it and stretching it like a lot of tanneries do to get that grain nice and tight and allow more yield per hide, they allow this leather to shrink and dry naturally, which gives it this pebbled, tumbled look. Versus the Tony Llamas, I believe this is a print embossed into the leather itself. It might not be, but out of the two of them, if you're splitting hairs, I'd rather have the naturally pebbled and textured leather that's gonna age more beautifully and age naturally with all these lines and striations in the leather. And as for the thickness, they're both about two millimeters thick. They both have the grain in the leather. So they're pretty decent leathers. But being a cowboy boot, how do they hold up to the rattlesnake test? And here's the problem. I just assumed rattlesnakes couldn't bite that hard for whatever reason, but we did the, the, in the Tony Lama video, we're like, oh, it's, it's safe for rattlesnakes. And everyone's like, hey, by the way, rattlesnakes have a bite of 150 pounds of pressure, so you're wrong. The Tony Lamas were not rattlesnake proof. So lesson learned. So this time we did it again with the vamp or with the shaft of the boot. So we ran the test and the Tecovis took 54.5 pounds to pierce through, not rattlesnake proof. And the Tony Llamas edged it out slightly with 87, like not even slightly, like quite a bit more uh, with 87 pounds. And that's where you get that difference between the more structured and harder, more durable cowhide versus the more, the softer, more malleable uh, calfskin. So slightly more snake proof. And as for the vamp itself, the Tecovis was 128.5 pounds to pierce and the Tony Llamas were 101. So the Tecovis have a slight advantage in the vamp when it comes to snake test, the Tony Llamas have the advantage in the shaft. I still think if a rattlesnake bit, you'd probably be fine in either of these boots, but it just is an interesting test to kind of put some of these materials in perspective of how durable they are and how puncture resistant they are. So what about the outsoles of these two boots? Well, you'll notice that both of these have a very similar leather outsole and you can see we ran a puncture test on both of these. And doing the puncture test on the Tecovis was 245 pounds, which is pretty similar to the Tony Llamas, which is a lot better than the rubber soled shoes. I was really surprised by that. And that's this is even before you started wearing these things. Anytime you wear a leather soled boot, if you feel like it's wearing down really fast, but over time your foot on all that pressure compresses the leather and makes it an even harder and more puncture resistant material and wear resistant material. But as for quality, both of these are fairly on par with quality because they're both just a big heavy slab of veg tan and leather that's made to be walked on all day. So pretty on par. As for the midsoles, we don't really know. The Tony Llamas had a little thin layer of cork. I'm assuming the Tecovis are the same way, but we don't really know until we get them cut in half. But the way these boots are constructed is also pretty much identical because they're both a Goodyear welted construction and lemon wood pegged, except the Tecovis you can see has little brass nails in there. So less traditional, less of that Leather is going to wear down at the same rate as the lemon wood pegs. The brasses might stick out a little bit, but unless you're really buying these to ride horses, the, the extra bit of strength given by the brass nails might be preferred over just lemon wood pegs. If you look at the hill block, different hill blocks as well. The Tecovis looks like, and I'd be willing to bet this is a full leather heel stack heel versus we found in the Tony Llamas. This is like a plasticky composite leather where it's not actual leather slabs, it's a le leather fibers combined with some sort of slurry that creates a leather-like heel block that's not actually full leather. So edge for sure on Tecovis for this one. And really the only thing left is the lining and the insoles. And the lining on the Tecovis, the one thing I do like about this is it's not, this pattern on the outside doesn't stitch all the way through to the inside. It gives you a lot cleaner and flatter lining versus the Tony Llamas. The stitching goes all the way through and more importantly, you've got a hard ridge of all those layers coming together right on the inside of the boot. And for the insoles, the Tony Llamas had this insole that was made to compress the, the shape of your foot after time with that little patch of like basically Dr. Scholl's gel versus the Tecovis have a permanent insole that feel like it's leather topped with pour on underneath in a very almost like Thursday way of building a boot. So it's kind of seeming like the Tecovis are just a little bit better than the Tony Llamas and maybe they're a little less of the Warby Parker of the boot world and, and more of like the Thursday boots of the cowboy boot world because they, they look like they're built really similar, very similar business model, but we won't really know for sure until we cut them in half to see which one's better, if, are, if they really are like Thursday boots. So now let's cut them in half.
sharp. All right, we got it cut in half. So now let's see what's inside and see which one's better. So lots of good materials in here. You've just as we suspected, you've got that leather topped pour on layer as your insole, it's permanent. You got that huge slab of leather for the insole with a little patch of a harder compressed cardboard at the heel, very similar to the, the Tony Llamas. You also have, instead of a steel shank like the Tony Llamas, you've got a really thick composite shank. Good for airports, good for a little bit of flexibility, but still maintaining that rigidity. It's also truly good you're welted. You can see the channel there, and it has that cork feeling also like the Tony Llamas. And now we know for sure that the heel stack is full leather and that the Tony Llamas is not. So advantage there with the Tecovis. And then the lining itself was a pretty big difference between these two. You know, the lining really makes a big difference in this boot because you don't have that hard ridge like we talked about. It's a little bit higher quality leather. I believe it's a calf skin. It does have a counter cover. It's flesh out. So that's one really nice thing is as you're wearing these boots, Cowboy boots slip no matter what because they're really hard to get to fit because you can't actually tighten them. So having that, that, that suede or that flesh out counter cover helps catch your heel and makes it easier to get these boots to fit you faster. You know, these Tony Llamas had that veg tan counter cover. It's, they're probably on par with each other to be honest, but I do like just that little bit of the advantage of having that, that suede texture. A couple things I don't like is the counter material is this really fragile thermoplastic counter type they just shatter and break really easily. Like if you watch me just bend this, see it just cracks like that. So if you step on this boot once in the wrong way and it's gonna crack that counter. I hate that material. Like there's, there's stuff that's a little bit more durable and more flexible. This to me is the absolute worst counter material you can put in a boot. And that same material is also in the toe, which also fractures and splits. And the thing that sucks about that is like, if you really, if you got stepped on your, your toes by a horse and they split that in half, you're gonna have a per permanent indentation in this boot forever, wherever that cracks and splits. Another thing I noticed is the, the stitching on the inside isn't the most heavy duty. You know, there's only one layer of stitching holding this vamp lining to the upper lining. And I wish that this flesh out counter cover was double layered, but instead that stitch line is the only thing holding those two layers together. So if you wear through that stitch line, you're kind of screwed. But aside from those negative things, I would still say that the lining in the inside of this boot is better than the Tony Llamas. Because the Tony Llamas just kind of seem like it's kind of cobbled together with a bunch of different leftover scraps. They don't, it, there's, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of rhyme or reason to like, all these different materials on the inside. And so which boot is better for the money? I would say the Tecovis. I think it's a better boot. It's got slightly better materials, especially that heel block. The lining's better, the upper leather's slightly better. I wouldn't say it's significantly better, but I would still say it's it's better enough that it, I would rather have the Tecovis than the Tony Llamas. And so do you get what you pay for with the direct-to-consumer model? I would say that that whole idea, and I don't even know if Tecovis claims this, where you're getting twice the value for half the price because they're going direct-to-consumer instead of paying the retail markup. I wouldn't say this is worth double of what the Tony Llamas are. I would say it's worth slightly more. So I still think you're getting some extra value out of these direct to consumer brands, but maybe not as much as people have claimed in the past. So let me know what you guys think. And if you've had both of these, what your experiences are in them, because that's an important resource, resource for these videos, because I don't get aware of these for several years at a time, but you guys do. And so the comment section, thankfully is a really positive comment section. It has lots of good information, corrects me when I'm wrong about rattlesnake bite pressures. And don't forget, we're dropping this White's collab on September end. You guys that like cowboy boots, I think you're gonna love this boot. It turned out so good. And there's a, there's a little feature that I can't tell you about yet because we don't have it finalized, but you're gonna love it. And uh, I'm really excited for it. So thanks for everything you guys do. See ya.